Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 2. I want you to follow with me if you would. I, I get my sermon out of verse 15, where it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that is needed, that uh, that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I want us to first go over to verse 1, and I want to talk about uh, that, that statement that we just read in verse 15, study to show thyself approved. That's what I want to talk about this morning, study to show thyself approved. And that's what it takes if we're going to ever understand the Word of God. You don't understand the Word of God. I don't know how many times I've heard people say, well, you know, I've tried it, but I just don't understand the Bible. Well, you, you're just not going to sit down and understand the Word of God. It, it, we, we have to do it God's way. We have to have our hearts right with God. We've got to... We've got to to be able to say, you know what, I'm saved, I'm born again, I'm washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, and and I'm going to study the Word of God. They can, they can water it down and street version it all the way out to every slang that there is to try to help people understand the Word of God, and they won't get any more out of it than if it was in the in the old English. It, it, you. You're just not going to understand the Word of God until you get to the point where you're willing to study the Word of God. Amen. That's what that's what God wants us to do is to understand the Word of God through a lot of study, to to to, to devote ourselves to Him, and that's what that's what three men that we're going to recognize today did. They made up their minds that they wanted to they wanted to get more than just just to be able to say, well, I'm a member of a church. They wanted to come to that point as many people in here today have already done. And that is to come to that point where they they said, you know what, I want to try, I want to understand this thing. What is it that God wants out of me? And how is God going to do that through me? And, and that's what God says here, that we are, we have to learn to study the word of God. And so whether you be man or whether you be woman, God has a mission for you. And, the, and you'll never truly understand that mission until you understand God's word. Amen. Because God's word is where we find what God wants out of us. In, in, in verse 1, it says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the, in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same uh, commit uh, thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except uh, he strive lawfully? The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, that the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according uh, to to the gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth uh, faithful, uh, he cannot deny himself. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, 
but to subverting of the hearers. And then this last verse, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I'm glad that we had three men here today that made that decision that they were going to study. They were going to study to show themselves approved unto God. They were going to study the word of God. It didn't matter what anybody else thought. They decided that they were going to learn and study this word of God. You know, sometimes sometimes people don't understand when somebody devotes themselves to the word of God and decides, I want to learn this thing. I want to know these things that God is saying in here because they pertain to me. And I want to grow. I want to become somebody other than just me that sits there, that, that, that I can attend church. But it goes beyond church. It's, I want to do what God wants me to do. I want to devote myself to God. That's what study is all about. Well, we have to study. Every time I've ever been in some kind of school, I've had to learn to study. But you know, I didn't know how to study when I was in high school. I was just a good student. I was a good guy. And they, you know, they, when, I, when I made 60s and 70s, my teachers gave me 70s and 80s. Because I was a good guy. I didn't know how to study. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know anything. When I, when I got accepted to the University of Georgia after I graduated uh, from, from high school, I got a letter of acceptance and it said that you are accepted tentatively. I didn't know what tentatively meant. I had to go look it up in the dictionary. My mama wouldn't tell me. She said, go look it up. That was a common answer I used to get. Go look it up. So I looked it up. And what it meant was I was not a very good student. And they were going to take me as a student at the university. But they were going to give me one quarter to find out whether or not I knew how to study. And fortunately, I had some people I met up there that took me aside and said, we're going to start going to the library every night, and you're going to study this subject matter. And I learned how to study. But what makes a person want to study the Bible? I was forced to make that decision to study. Because back then there was a thing called the draft. And they said, you can go to college and study or your draft status is going to get changed to what was it, 1A or A1? 1A. Which meant, which meant immediately we're going to invite you to, to get on a bus and meet the most wonderful person that you've ever met. That's right. and, uh, and, and you know what? I did not want, I did not want to go and get on that bus and meet that person. Now I did one day, I met S Sergeant Slovaka, wherever that man is burning. I can promise you, I met him that day on that bus. But I can tell you, I learned how to study. I learned how to study because, because that they, they, I was forced to study. I had a, I had an a object, a, a, a draft notice that forced me to study. What makes a person come to want to study the Word of God? There's nothing that forces them. They're not there to try to impress somebody. They don't impress the pastor. They don't impress the church. They don't impress spouses. They don't impress anybody. People that, that have that calling to study the word of God, they have to have a motivation within themselves. They got to, they motivate themselves because everybody else can convince them of something else they should be doing. But they have to overcome that. They have to force themselves to say, you know, I'm not going to miss this Sunday night Bible college. I'm not going to miss next Sunday night. I know there's five other things that everybody else has in store for me, but I'm not going to miss this because I, I want to study it becomes, it becomes something that a person wants to do, to know the Word of God. 
What is it that God is telling us in this book? Why is Genesis so important? Why is Exodus important? What is Leviticus all about? And boy, when they get in Leviticus and they learn those 613 laws that God said, thou shalt and thou shalt not. 613 of thou shalt. And boy, I tell you, people start looking at that and start learning, why is that important? Are we still under that? And then we, numbers. Why numbers? What does that mean, numbers? Deuteronomy. What is all of that about? Why is Moses giving all of this, this, this re-law over and over again? He repeats it from all back in Exodus. Tells the story again. On and on and on, they begin to look at the Word of God and they begin to see things they've never seen before. Amen. Study. That's what it takes. You get in there and all of a sudden you start learning things that you never saw, you never knew. Why did God say that? Study. That's why, that's why these people are, are here today. That's why I want to recognize them because they have studied for three years. They have studied the word of God. It, it, notice what verse 15 said. Study to show thyself approved. Uh, approved for who? It said approved unto God. Uh, approved unto God. That's who we get approval from when we study the Word of God. We, we are a, we're approved of God. And we're not approved of anybody in the church. We're not approved of anybody up here. We're not, we don't need the approval of anybody else. Now, all of our friends, all of our neighbors, people that we know, it doesn't matter whether they approve of it or not. What matters is that God approves of it. Amen. It's God that said study. It's God that said, I'm going to approve it. I'm going to put my stamp of approval on what you're going to do. You know, there's, there's stamps of approval on everything. You go buy meat and it's, there's a stamp on there. Approved by the USDA. You can eat this meat. If you can afford it, you can eat it. And it, there's cans of stuff that says you can eat it. Why? Because it's been approved by somebody. You buy something and it has got somebody's a stamp of approval. You buy clothes and it's been approved by somebody somewhere that, that this was made in some type of proper atmosphere. Everything has got a stamp of approval on it. But the one that matters the most is God's. Amen. It's the stamp of God that's on there. That's what he says. He says, study to show that I approved unto God. That's why people go to the Bible college. That's why they stay in the Bible college. It's not to be approved by anybody. It's not to make somebody think something about them. It's to be approved by God. I want God to, I want God to look at what I'm doing and say it's well done. I want God to put his stamp on there and say, good job. You stuck it out. You stayed there. You didn't quit. When the days were were cold outside, you still showed up. When it was pouring down rain, you still showed up. When it was hot and the air condition couldn't keep that little building cool, you still showed up. You came summer and winter and fall and spring, the cold and the rain, whatever it was, you still showed up. You parked out there. You came out. You came with your Bible. Why? Because you wanted to study to show thyself approved unto God. He says, to, uh, approved unto God, what? He says in verse 15, a workman. You become a workman. Now listen, I, I, know, I know what work is. It doesn't mean I've ever done it. But I know what work is. You know, you, when I think of work, I don't think of anything I've ever done. I taught school for, for a number of years after I, after I got out of the service. I I, I became a school teacher. I, my degree was in education. I, I got a, a, a wonderful job teaching, but teaching to me wasn't work. Hey, you, you had to put up with a lot of noise and a lot of people and things like that. But it wasn't the, it wasn't the idea of what I had in my mind of work. I was physically okay, but mentally I was fried. But it just, just wears you out. 
But to me, it just wasn't the work that I thought of. And, and I've done other jobs and worked, worked for the guard. The only thing that worked for 21 years when I worked for the guard was this finger right here got, uh, got arthritis in it from holding a coffee cup. <laughs> but pretty much that was, that was pretty much it. But I did that for 21 years. Still can't write with that right hand. And, uh, but, but you know what? That wasn't work. When I think of work, I think of those guys that are out there in 110 degrees building something, hammering. Those, those, those guys out there that are roofers that are up there on top of the roof and, and it's 115 and they're, they're just the sweat's pouring. They weigh 135 pounds and they're as hard as a light or not. Yeah, it, it's just, when I think of work, that's what I think of. Do you know what God said work was? God said it was that per person that studied the word of God. Amen. Study to show thyself approved, a workman. That when, you, when you begin to study the word of God, you become a workman for God. It, it's, it's, it's a work unlike anything else because it's God's word that becomes that, that thing that you battle with. What does he mean? What is he telling me? So many times I've had to stop and say, God, what? I don't understand what you're telling me here. And, and the more I study it, then all of a sudden he shows me another verse over there that all, that all of a sudden clears this up. But it's a workman. That's what these three men became. They became workmen for God. Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, they worked to learn the word of God. It's, it said not to be ashamed. A workman not ashamed. Do you know that one of the biggest reasons why people drop out of doing something like this is they become ashamed around their friends. People make fun of you. People start saying things. You have to make up your mind. Who are you doing it for? For God or for what everybody else thinks? Oh, there's people that will always... They'll always say something smart about it. Oh, the, the preacher boy. Oh, yeah. He, there's a there. What what are you trying to do? Why do you always go to church? What what's the purpose in all of this? And all of a sudden, you you begin to. Uh, they try to ashamed you sometimes into into giving up. <clears throat> but you know what what a workman is is a workman is is that person that can face all the shame that's thrown at him. And said, I'll be there Sunday. Amen. I'll be there. Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. You're not going to shame me into giving up. You're not going to shame me into quitting. I'm going to stay with the word of God. A workman, not ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. That was something else that God said in verse 15. Rightly dividing the word of truth. If there's one problem in the world today, it's that people don't know how to divide the word of truth. This Bible is, is not the same in one section as it is the other section. You have to learn to, to rightly divide the word of truth. <clears throat> when God tells the Jews to do something over here, he's not telling the church to do something over here. Now there are times that you can put the two together, but you've also got to understand that sometimes God divides it and says you are to do it over here, but you're not to do it over here. God sometimes wants us to learn the word of God to the point that we know that, that over here it was okay, but over here it's not okay. And the only way you can ever understand that is you've got to study it. You've got to study to show thyself approved. A workman that's not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Well, I'm glad that we've got people, three men that made up their minds that they were going to go through it. Faithful men, as in verse 2 said. Verse 2 called them faithful. He said, he says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. There's something about these three men that I'd like to, to say about them this morning, is that they're faithful men. They were men that drove, men that came a good way. Timmy came all the way from, from, from Brantley County. 
Sunday night after Sunday night, pouring down rain. He made it through. Many a time we left out of here and the storm was coming down. And I prayed, I prayed for Timmy to get home. I prayed for Ronnie. Ronnie had just as far, uh, just almost the same distance that he had to come. Glenn lived right down the road. But still, right down the road can be a dangerous journey sometimes. But I pray, I pray for each person that would leave here that Sunday night. Pray that God would give them a safe journey. Pray that God would get them down the roads where the deer were crossing at night, where people would cross that center line after being out uh, in, in places they shouldn't have been. And I pray, dear God, get them through. Get them past those people. Get them past that car that's going to swerve over the center line. But there, he's not going to swerve until they get back. Because God, you're going to hold that car right there until that my servant gets there. And let him pass. Then if that guy swerves, let him swerve. But let him swerve after your servant right there that left the college. He passed him. And you kept him safe, God. Get him there. Get him there home. That, faithful men. That's what I wanted God to, to just to, to bless them because they were faithful. They stayed faithful. They were good soldiers. Verse 3 said, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. These three men were soldiers. You, to be a soldier, you've got... You've got to, to learn to obey orders. You've got to follow what you're told to do. When you're in a foxhole and somebody says, get down, you don't raise up and say what? You, you've got to listen to the orders and follow them. It takes a hard person. You learn. You learn because you're taught. And, and our drill sergeant for these soldiers <coughs> is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he taught us and he teaches us <clears throat> to do what he says, not, not what somebody else says. But we do it because he directs us, he tells us. He says endure hardness. You've got to get hard sometimes if you're going to endure the cross of Calvary. People that followed the Lord Jesus Christ learned the hard way that being a Christian sometimes meets with a lot of a, a lot of hatred, a lot of laughter, a lot of uh, people that want to hurt you. But you endure it. You keep going. You keep fighting. That's what these three did. They endured the hardness as a soldier. They kept going and refused to give up. It says, it says in verse 4, it says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. That's the one thing that I wanted these three men to grab a hold of. It's no man that wore it. See, they, they're soldiers. They have to go to war for the Lord Jesus Christ. But he says, no man that wore it entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. You have to learn who the enemy is. You've got to learn who you're to fight. And if you entangle yourself with other people, you're fighting the wrong enemy. Our enemy is Satan, not each other. If you're going to be a soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ, and these three men have learned that, that they've got to, they've got to focus on, on who their enemy is, and their enemy is Satan himself. Their enemy is the one that's trying to destroy them, not some other church. Not some other people, not some other denomination, not some other thoughts and beliefs. Their enemy is Satan. And as long as you keep your eyes on the enemy, you know who you're fighting. And these three men have endured hardness. They've endured the difficulties. They've endured the weather. They've endured three years of study over and over and over. And I encourage everybody here to learn from them, learn from them that to serve God, you have to just make up your mind. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to keep going. 
no matter what. I'm going to, uh, whether uh, the sun shines or the rain comes down, whether the weather is bad or whether it's good, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going for the glory of God. And these three men, I'm proud to say, have done that. And I'm proud of them. These, these three men that I want to honor today, I want to thank them for all that they have done. Up here, uh, I've got uh, a little uh, graduation plaque for each one. And uh, Timmy, you come up if you would at this time. And come right on up here beside me. This is a plaque to you from our Coastal Bible College to Timmy Bullard for the graduation of 2021. And I just want to say thank you for thank all you, the work sir. that you have done. If you'd like to say something to the to the church or acknowledge whatever you what's on your heart. First, I want to thank you for teaching this class. For y'all, that if you haven't been to the Bible College, I suggest you go. It's wonderful. You learn a lot. It's, it's a great thing. Amen. Thank, thank you, thank brother. You. God bless you. Uh, Ronnie, come on up. And Timmy, I've got the box right back here, right after church. You can, you can get this. Ronnie, it is a dear pleasure, come on up here, brother, uh, to be able to present to you uh, this plaque, and uh, and I want to thank you for being so faithful uh, to, to our Bible college and to taking care of our church in so many different ways on, on serving as our treasurer, but you dedicated yourself to, to learning the Bible, and I want to thank you for it. It's a, a great job. Thank you for the three years that you studied. If you would like to share with us anything on your well, first of all i'd like to thank my family for being here amen you, Van, my brother earl yes and my the twin sisters gene and john i have to introduce them together because they're always together <laughs> my lovely wife cindy and when i started i, I got to hurt down you now <coughs> no, you got to mention you i mentioned you first <laughs> <laughs> When I started in Bible college, I could not tell you if, if a verse was in the Old Testament or the New Testament. Now I can find the verse sometime before Larry can. Amen. Uh, just some of the highlights of Bible college was the genealogy of the Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then the, six, the, the 613 laws that you've got to live by. And then get into Proverbs and realize that the book has 31 chapters. If you read one a day, you can finish it in a month. Yes. And Amen. if you read it over and over, it'll teach you how to live your life. Yeah. Right. And then Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's, it's the life of Jesus, his ministry while he was on earth. Yeah. Then Paul's letters to the churches. And then we got into Timothy. Timothy teaches you what a man is supposed to be if he's going to be a pastor. That's right. What a man is to be if he's supposed to be an elder in the church. The woman's role in the church. Yeah. And then Revelation. Larry, you're probably the best Revelation teacher I've ever heard. Well, thank you. And appreciate. we spent eight weeks just in Revelation. And I will be back this fall. We start with Timothy. And we go, I'm going to go all the way back through Revelations again. And I appreciate the church giving Larry the time and the resources to teach this college. Because without that, there would be no college. And Larry puts a lot of time in putting the information together the brochures, and everything that we go by. But I want to thank all of y'all for allowing me to go, and I appreciate it. Amen. 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 What a blessing. <laughs> and Glenn, come on up, brother. Come on around, around here, if you would. And, and, and the three of you guys, if you would, before you leave, I want to get a picture. I want to get a picture of everybody together, if you would, please. And uh, Glenn, come on around here. Uh, God bless you. Uh, here is your plaque, and uh, just wanted uh, to thank you for all that you've done. It has been a 
a, a, a journey for you to go through it. Glenn's a truck driver. He's on the road. Uh, he would leave out sometimes right after right after class right. and uh, and head out, be heading out to the Midwest and not get back till Saturday, park his truck, and he was right back here on Sunday, Sunday night. And he did it over and over and over again. And uh, and so I want to thank you, brother, for your dedication to the Lord. Say something to the church, if you would, before you. <laughs> I kind of feel the same way Timmy does. If you haven't been to it, you should. It is a commitment, but it's well worth it. Amen. And I look forward to going through it three years after three more years. Amen. After three more years as long as I'm teaching. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God bless you, Glenn. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, you, what a dedication that these three men have given to their Bible college. And, and, and that's what it takes, folks. It, it just takes dedication. Whether you go through the college or not, uh, becoming the life of a Christian is it's the same. It's dedication to the Word of God. It's studying the Word of God. It's being faithful to the house of God and learning and ministering the way that God calls you. And that's what we need in today's world. We need uh, people like that. And you three guys, I thank you so much. You're, you're a, a good foundation for our church, and we need you. Amen. And so God bless you for all that you do. Let's have us a word of prayer before we...